Sorry, Jack. Chucky's back. How's it hanging, Phil? Child's Play 2. He's the original. He'll take your breath away. This fall, Chucky rules. Did you miss me, Andy? I sure missed you. Child's Play 2. Keep an eye out for it. Hey everybody, welcome to From Justin to Kane. Uh, I'm Mike and with me as always is Bob. Hi everybody. And uh, yeah, today is fourth week of October as you all probably know. Uh, you have a calendar and today we have a special guest as we do during October. Uh, we have filmmaker, writer, man about town, Omar Mualam. Man about town in a pandemic, also known as uh, Mr. Super Spreader. It's what they call me. Super Spreader about town. And we are recording in a studio together, and I didn't know that you were a super spreader. Oh, yeah, my God. Here I am. <laughs> here I am. It's too late. We got to just go for it, yeah. Mike. Yeah. You know, it's, embrace luckily, it. Luckily, we're all, you know, sharing the same couch. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Omar is a, uh, he's the director of a movie called The Last Baron, which is about mm-hmm. the Burger Baron franchise, a regional burger chain, regional to, I guess, Alberta, Western Alberta, although there are Burger Barons all over the world, I learned. There have been. When I watched the movie, there have been. There have been. And he's also the author of a book called Praying to the West, Praying to the West with the subtitle of How Muslims Shaped the Americas. But according mm. to a review in the National Review of Books, the subtitle is wrong. It should be how the Americas oh, really? shaped Muslims. Interesting, interesting. Fair critique. Fair a critique. reviewer said that? A reviewer said that. Right out of the gate. First wow, line. that's wild. Just like, let me invert your whole thesis. <laughs> You're wrong. You're yeah. dumb. I take issue book, with the, the title. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is good. But the title, mm -mm. (laughs) mm-mm. Oh, that's so confusing. That doesn't make any sense. I love it. So, yeah, both of the, both of your, your big projects, uh, I mean, at least for me, kind of happened the same day. Like your movie came out. It wasn't just for you, my friend. They came out four days apart. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you kind of had like a big week. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then everything just went completely back to normal. Nice. Nice. Went back to my maskless ways. You know, just going to, you know, my favorite lounges, my favorite hookah bars. Ultra ultra lounges? Ultra lounges. <laughs> Uber ultra yes. lounges, actually. Uh. <laughs> um, so give us a maybe elevator pitch of, of both of the things. Although I think the book kind of speaks for itself based on the subtitle, which I guess is wrong. Yes. <laughs> according to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, yeah geez. okay so the the book um is a travelogue of uh, muslim communities in the west basically you know debunking this whole like monolithic uh islam uh myth that a lot of uh people have and uh so up until the end of 2019 i'd been traveling uh for about two and a half years and uh so the book's written in like about 13 profiles of different mosques and those mosques sort of tell the story of a congregation, uh, how they got there, why they're important, but also like the untold history of that region going back, uh, 500, you know, years to, uh, you know, to, to enslaved, uh, Muslim Africans all the way to the present moment with a radically inclusive, uh, LGBTQ led mosque in Toronto mm-hmm. and it sort of gives you the breadth wow. of both Muslim experiences, identity and uh, history. So that's the book. Sweet. 
And then uh, The Last Baron is a uh, funny documentary about a rogue burger chain that was uh, basically uh, culturally appropriated by Lebanese immigrants like my parents and Mm -hmm. became the ticket to the immigrant dream. Uh, And uh, it's been, you know, it's this fast food chain that was started in the 1950s by a American entrepreneur who uh, thought he could beat McDonald's to Canada. Um, McDonald's was all the rage in America, but Canada had barely, you know, Canadians had barely tasted fast food. Um, and he, it seemed mm-hmm. like his his prophecy proved true. It, it blew up to like 30 restaurants in three years, and then it quickly went bankrupt, collapsed under the weight of its aggressive expansion. And some of the mm-hmm. last existing burger barons, original burger barons, were bought up by this one... Lebanese immigrant who then kind of memed it, started opening yeah. new locations, uh, used it as a way to sponsor his family members, get them out of the Lebanese civil war. And then it just kind of proliferated and, and it became sort of part of the collective, uh, the collective memory of Alberta Lebanese. Uh, and, uh, and it's just kind of been like this public domain thing until in the last 30 years, someone did successfully, not just anyone, the uh, late founder's widow came out of nowhere and uh, registered the trademarks, re-registered them. And so the future of the Burger Baron is unknown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know the story of the burger chain. I just kind of just took Burger Baron for granted. As an Edmontonian, me, you just me, see them everywhere, well. and you just you're like, yeah, the the menu is a little bit different every every one, but it's like the it's pretty consistent still. Yeah, I mean, it's like the in Edmonton, it's pretty consistent, but yeah. I don't think that you would think that if you um, spent enough time in small towns. So I grew up in High Prairie. That's yeah. where my parents owned their Burger Baron, and their Burger Baron right. was officially called Burger Baron Pizza and Steak. Um, and you know, they like served veal on the menu. It mm. was not like your typical burger that's, baron. That's so insane. It had a, it had a bar. Oh, wow. It had, uh, when it opened, it had a jukebox, <laughs> it had like a big smoking section and non-smoking section. It had a cigarette machine. Um, and, uh, and it was like the nice place to go for, you know, birthday party dinners and stuff in high prairie. So that's like one burger baron. But then you could go like, you know, another couple towns over and go to Wabasca and, um, you know, you might see some of the same stuff, but you also might see like Bannock burgers because there's a large Mm. indigenous community there. And then you might go to like a place like Caroline where it is the only sit down restaurant and, um, it's like this beautiful like log house architecture. <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of a gorgeous building. Um, and the, you know, the restaurant is officially called Baron family restaurant, but it has the same logo. Yeah. And um, so like the small towns is like where the irregularities really, really shine. Yeah, yeah. It's very fascinating just for like a burger chain. Someone is earnestly trying to start a burger chain and then just somehow it gets out of their hand and then it just kind of like turns into all of these very kind of like unique, they kind of like evolve yeah. into their own forms. Exactly. Just by being kind of separate, which is kind of, kind of cool. Like if you just like gave someone the, gave a bunch of people the McDonald's license, but then you're but just you like, didn't give them the, like you didn't give them the brand guidebook. Yeah. And you just, and yeah, you cut exactly. them off from each other. Uh, but yeah. the, the funny yeah, thing really is, fascinating. you know, all these guys, all the owners, like a lot of them knew each other. A lot of them were mm-hmm. friends with each other, but they just they just didn't see any value in like they didn't f- see any value in following one person's lead. They might steal each other's yeah. ideas. And that was totally cool. Like that. I mean, that is kind of how it proliferated is one person being like, oh, I know the mushroom burger recipe. Let me teach you how to do it. Just, you know, stay off my turf and we're good. I love the the sort of the anecdote partway through where he was trying to enforce uniforms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it just like didn't fly. And then as soon as he'd walk up, they'd like frantically put on the uniforms to try to fool him. But he was so aware of what was going on. And it's just like, that's such a good snapshot of like, this is, this is gonna not going to work. These are just all free agents making similar products, but not identical and products. The I funniest love that. thing about that 
too is how you know after he tells that story and first of all like the people that he's talking about like the Lebanese that won't refuse to Mm -hmm. wear his uniforms and are pretending are his like nephews and nieces you know these are people that he like (laughs) helped save from civil war and like you think the least Mm -hmm. they could do is just like put on a uniform uh (laughs) But then he's like, but the Canadians, and by that he means like the white people, they wore the uniform all the time. No problem, whether I'm there or not. Like they, they can follow rules. Um, so your dad owned one. Um yeah. how many burgers have would you say you've had in your lifetime? <laughs> uh, including the ones you ate in the documentary, which seemed like quite a few. Yeah. So many. Just a montage. It was a montage. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's safe to say like a burger per restaurant. So probably like fifteen to twenty, something like mm. that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, nice. they, I mean, they, you know, they're incredibly hospitable, and they were not going to send us uh, away without burgers. The thing is, though, because we were like we were making a movie with CBC. And so there's, yeah. you know, journalistic standards and practices. You don't want to take free meals. And, and you know, I kind of come from a background in journalism. So I had that sort of, um, you know, I had that, uh, I guess, those those ethics as well that, you know, some, some of these people, we don't, you know, we're not necessarily out to get anyone, but some people by their own doing don't exactly portray themselves very positively. Um, Mm -hmm. and so, you know, they wouldn't let us leave without eating and, but also we had to pay for everything. So basically they were just like creating their own business. They, like if, Mm -hmm. if they, (laughs) if they knew from the get go that like, I absolutely cannot accept this free meal, they should have just like gave us like one of everything. And then, and then like, well, I guess, I guess that'll come to $400. How, how long, um, from basically sort of you wanted to make this project to it appearing on CBC and premiering oh, at different man, festivals. Oh, man, it came together like, how, so how long fast. Well, it hasn't time? been in festivals yet. And, I mean, I could tell you we're, we're doing a feature version of it that uh, hopefully will be running in festivals, you know, starting next summer. Oh, okay. We've uh, got a new name. I don't know if I'm ready to unveil it. Uh, I'm not, uh, but I can you tell you to, it's a no, we don't, great, no we don't have to have no the, great title. Yeah, we don't have to have the hot scoop. <laughs> this podcast um, isn't that popular. <laughs> it's it's not worth this it. Is this not is the not the, the platform. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> we, we have listeners, but they're going to be like, okay. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> cool. How long? Um, the, the, it came together insanely fast. Like I, I wanted to do it for a very long time, but like never actually mm-hmm. pitched it to anyone. Hmm. And then uh, my co-producer, uh, Dylan Reese Howard, I think he came to me in December and was like, want to do another CBC documentary? I remember you talking about that Burger Baron idea. Why don't we propose it? We sent it to them, I think, in January, February. It was green lighted. Uh, and then in, I don't know, end of May, we had a rough cut, maybe June. And then wow. uh, that's amazing. Uh, refined it a little bit. A um, lot of time spent on legal. <laughs> yeah. Oh mm. my god. Release forms. Am I right? The worst. Uh, oh yeah. And then it and then it was out in September. So what is that? Six, eight months? Not even seven months. Yeah. That's super fast. And it's not like a short doc. It's not a twelve minute piece. It's you know you cover a lot of ground and it plays out over. I watched it with commercials and it was 44 minutes. So I don't know what that means <laughs> in actual runtime, but it was nice. It's like a, it was a chunky beast. It was oh, awesome. Thanks, man. Um, that's fast. Yeah. That's a crazy turnaround. And you had to travel for everything. Yeah, you had to travel all around Alberta. And did you fly to Lebanon also? No, we, we hired a crew there. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah we hired okay. a crew there and then so like, in well, California as well. Yeah, no, I mean, we technically oh, yeah, I had to uh, three California. units, I guess, California, Lebanon and, and Alberta. Um, the guys that I work with in Alberta were, were, um, amazing. Mo and Mazin Mahfouz. I don't know if you've worked with them before or know them They're Um, they have a company called, uh, bad films, be a dreamer films, and they're just so mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. And they're also, they're also Lebanese. And so it just helped with, uh, loosening up our subjects and just kind of, you know, gaining their, gaining their trust. And also it was just fun to work with them on, on like, a story that had so much cultural significance for for all of us. So it was cool to travel with them and and um, 
you know, of course, we made sure to travel in a single vehicle, share one hotel room. Actually, we always got one yes. bed. That's how we preferred to do it. Yeah. Um, and, Great. Uh, yeah, you awesome. know, we Dutch ovened it like all night. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but, with, you know, instead of farts, it's coughing. Just it's coughing. Just coughing. The yes. <laughs> it's actually coughing a Lebanese oven. Sheets. It's a Lebanese oven, technically. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds amazing. Yeah. Just the whole project is so cool. And I love, you know, for me, I've eaten at Burger Baron twice in my life and had no clue. And then, like, we, we have a lot of mutual friends, but we're just meeting now. I heard a lot of whispers about this documentary. And I was like, what is this? What is this, like, Lebanese sort of narrative that's, like, woven into this Burger Baron thing? What is Burger Baron? And then... I didn't do any research and then watched the documentary today. And I was like, this is like this awesome, bizarre odyssey of like immigration, entrepreneurial pursuits, family, and also like this sort of distinct depiction of like small town entrepreneurial sort of like family and like the depiction of people's upbringings in these small towns and how these burger barons would sort of mold to the context of each town. And that's why they're all so different. But then this like linear through line of like, oh, these are all. Lebanese immigrants who are like family or friends and then they're leaving a, a place that's in turmoil and then just like opening a burger shack. It's just it so is, interesting. It, it, I, I like no the word idea. odyssey. It's such it a great education. Odyssey. And it took me a very long time well, to figure that out. I mean, I knew there were other burger barons. Profound. I knew that they were Lebanese. I knew that for some reason they have like no cohesion, but I never <laughs> thought like it was only about I think eight years ago that I started to actually look into how this thing started back then there was mm-hmm. actually, um, cause I wrote about it about eight years ago for swerve magazine. And at that time there was a man claiming to be the original burger Baron. Uh, one of the Lebanese dudes, wow. the, uh, Sal Camel Dean. He's, he's the, mo- he's like documentary gold. Um, I mean, yeah. I almost mm-hmm. wish I, I almost <laughs> wish that I did not expose him as, <laughs> as the imposter that he was eight years ago because, oh my God, what a, uh, what a saga that would have been to, uh, to, you know, to, to sort of un, <laughs> to rip off his Scooby Doo mask in this documentary. <laughs> um, because I think he, I mean, he, it seemed like he had been keeping that up for maybe over 20 years at that point. I mean, yeah. he at, since at wow. least the early 90s, he'd been claiming to be the founder of the Burger Baron. And I think that was in 2013 that I uh, found out the truth. And I found out the truth because I went to him thinking he was the original Burger Baron. Uh, and then just by chance i was like oh how about that burger baron in regina um they're not lebanese i wonder why let's find out oh it's the founder's family (laughs) yeah Mm. there's also this really profound and this is neither here nor there but i'm gonna bring it up anyways the fact that the guy who started burger baron's last name was (laughs) mcdonnell and he wanted to compete with mcdonald is so fucking crazy. And he didn't. To me. He didn't just call and that, it McDonald's. And that, and that literally, he just wanted to beat, and he should have just called him. <laughs> he should have called him McDonald's. Like the ca- Canadian. If there was McDonald's a time when he could get, a, get away amazing. with it, it was probably 1957. I'm sure, like 1958, exactly. McDonald's Fuck. like <laughs> brought in their their like trademark or copyright. Um. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's but like I I love that you picked up on that. It is um just one of those weird coincidences it's like almost from the beginning of magnolia you know like mm-hmm. you know this person mm-hmm. jumped out of a window and was shot on the way down and could have been caught by the <laughs> net and this guy almost created mcdonald's and his real name was mcdonald just the overlap you could have got a bunch of people just going there like kind of like when you go to the video store and there's like the you know the ones the 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 movies that have a similar title it's not quite the same you know <laughs> exterminator mm. to right. judgment you know, afternoon or something like that. And then like <laughs> judgment time, <laughs> judgment of, time day. of day. Yeah. And people are like, Oh, that was the one I wanted to see. <laughs> I did that with, um, what was the Jurassic park one? Ooh. Um, I, I mean like a knockoff. Jurassic there was a movie park? called Carnosaur. That Carnosaur. In okay. 90s. Let me tell you a story. Yeah, okay. Mm. So, um, in 19, in 1992, my parents decide 
that they are going to uh, finally uh, follow through on their dream of moving back to Lebanon. <clears throat> I'm mm-hmm. seven years old. My brother's 10. My sister's 13. Uh, they have not been to Lebanon in a very long time. Uh, you know, civil war. And also, you know, I think by that point, my dad had been living in Canada for 21 years. So they decided that mm-hmm. we're going to move there. So we go there, we give, we give it uh, a try for seven months. And uh, yeah, bad idea. Come back. Uh, and I come back and the only thing all my friends are talking about is Jurassic Park. Oh my God. Like, and I just felt like I'd missed out on the most important thing to ever, you know, happen in, in, in the Western world. And I go to a movie, I go to a movie store and get what I think is Jurassic Park. And I take home that VHS and I get ready to watch it. And it is the shittiest movie that I've ever seen in my life. And like suddenly mm-hmm. I'm just like looking down on Western civilization thinking like, take me back. I don't know <laughs> yeah. how this captured the hearts and minds of people. This movie is terrible. <laughs> I'm eight years old now and even I can see it. Uh, and it uh, turns out that it was, uh, it hadn't come to video yet. Wrong movie. Oh, yes, yes. This is great also because Mike and I have several episodes where we discuss um different film exploitations and dino exploitation was sort of a prolific yeah, in, moment in, in history the in the early 90s yeah, in the 90s theodore rex carnosaur dinosaurs Jurassic were the Park. they were the sharks of the 90s yeah prehysteria yeah they're yeah they were truly they were we're over the shark thing what is it now what is it in the in the 2020s uh, the 2010s belong to the shark i feel like it's is it like not just time altering catastrophe caused by a small rock <laughs> might be. that glows? Because like a lot of movies have like, whoa, like we're we're done for. There's so many parallel universes, and the small rock is causing it yeah, for some reason. Super, you know, I guess that kind of that's kind of what it feels like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, Mike. Exactly. Uh, I guess. Uh, octopus exploitation if you count my octopus teacher i can't think of any other movie though hmm. what's that one with octomom <laughs> it doesn't it? count exploitation with one movie oh, Octomom. oh that was a Octomom. i think that was just real life okay i don't think there was a, <laughs> okay, a movie that was just, okay yeah that was just <laughs> dateline yeah that was just dateline yeah, yeah. that was just a real person who yes had a lot of babies inside You, you, you catching that? You catching that baby? Catching that I do baby hear some, in your little bit. I hear some little children. Bit. Good, good. Just I got some sound effects and I'm trying them out, so I just want to see if you're catching them. <laughs> yeah, you got well, maybe this is a really seamless transition. We can hear babies in the background. Let's talk about um, you know the famous horror franchise, Child's Play, which ah. famously actually are there babies in child's play i there's, don't think so there's child all, you know, actors kids. surprisingly adept child yes, actors actually. child actors crisis actors um yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, i don't i don't think are there any babies i don't think there are any babies. i think that's too I don't much think so a baby in peril is just like it's too much horror you know a yeah, quiet yeah. place yeah. like i is, i had just had a you oh. know i just had my daughter noe uh, she was like probably less than a year old when I saw that. In half the movie, there is a baby in peril. That's it's too mm-hmm. much. Yeah, too real. I can. Well, I can't. I mean, I can't imagine what that's like, though. But for like new parents, when that film came out, I have a few friends who have like youngins who were just born when that movie came out, and it's like they couldn't sit through it. It was way, just way, way, way too much to handle. You know? Yeah. No, I think I. Ugh, I, I yeah, yeah. I just. Yeah. Yeah, I, I sat through, but I think I left the movie theater with lockjaw or something, and I just clenching my teeth the whole yeah. time. Is Chucky a baby? Um, well, I guess Seed of Chucky, what is Chucky has a baby in it. Oh, that one has a baby. Okay. All right. Yeah, does he have sex with a real human person in it? Is that what happens? I think he has sex with with his bride. That I mean, I oh, hope okay. he doesn't have sex with a real human. Like poor bride of Chucky, if she were to get that news. Oh right, I forgot he was yeah. married. Right. Of yes, course. of course. Of course, he's monogamous. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, to my knowledge, they they were monogamous. I mean, maybe maybe they were poly. I don't know. Maybe there were like there was like a Toy Story thing going on uh, on the side. Mm, when the camera yes, shut yes, off, yes. like you know, they all the dolls came together, <laughs> threw the keys together, and so supposedly there's a Chucky TV show coming out. And uh, no. When... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's coming out. I yeah. think this. Oh, this yeah, month. yeah. No way. It's already, I had no it's idea. already, it's already premiered. Out. Is this called Chucky? I think. And it's the original team, so it has nothing to do with the recent reboot that kind of came out of nowhere last really? year or two years ago. The person who plays Kyle, the woman who's in Child's Play two, and the the kid who play the guy who plays the kid, Andy. Whatever, what it was his name, Andy. Uh, yeah, they're both in this TV show. That is amazing. So they're, well, they're in a TV show. Yeah, that's sweet. I, Good I for them. Yeah. cannot wait until we finish recording this podcast so I can go watch that. Can we wrap it up? We're good. <laughs> yeah, this is all we needed. Thank you, Omar. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> you can leave. I read now. an interview with the woman, and she she was talking about how disappointed they were when the the remake that came out with Aubrey Plaza in it because they were just yeah. like this the. the the Don Mancini or whatever his name is, the guy who makes these movies has been working on this, this franchise for like 26 years or something like that. 30 years almost. And uh, she's just like, he's got a story that he's trying to tell. And it's just like, they just kind of are disrespecting the story he's trying to tell. And I'm just like, what story do you think (laughs) is like, (laughs) needs to be told for over 30 years in like 10 different movies about a doll. I think he's been telling the story. I think he's had, I think he's had many opportunities. I I have mixed, like I have mixed feelings about the new, about the reboot. I like, I, I genuinely did not enjoy it. Like I didn't find it compelling. I was on my phone almost the entire time, but I liked the intention of it. Like I'd like the fact Mm -hmm. that there that Chucky is made this way through like environmental influences that it is AI that drives him to be evil because let's face it, the worst part of the original Chucky um, is the origin story. The, like the Charles Lee Mm. Ray, he's like a bank robber, serial killer, strangler and voodoo witch doctor. Yes. I I struggled, so I've only seen Child's Play two. You didn't see I Child's Play one. I did not know 1? what I was walking into. I've never oh, seen the first okay. one. I know the IP. I've seen Chucky things, but so I've you never don't, watched them. Can films. I just? Do you know how Chucky starts? No, I don't have a Mike, fucking clue. I have no idea. Can we educate? Him? Uh, I I gathered. I gathered. I haven't seen Child's Play one since I was a kid. Okay, uh, but this mm. movie actually does a pretty decent ex- exposition dump off the top. They, they hit you over the head. Like, I, yeah. I can piece it together. But what got me was the scene when he's trying to transfer his soul into the kid and he just starts speaking Latin. Yeah. When did he so- learn this? When was there a workshop for him as a haunted doll to be like, you have to do this like seance and then you got to like figure out how to transfer your soul, but you got to do it. It's time sensitive. Yeah, so I, I, you know, it's stressful. <laughs> it is. It is. When? When did, is it in the first? Yes, movie? it is. They it is. That and you know, movie? I think that they they should have given it up by the second one. I wish, like, I really wish that they mm. just got rid of the whole Charles Lee Ray thing by the second one. Um, but it's actually just it's not as important in Child's Play two, um, though. And I I think mm. that the. Uh, you know, the, I guess that I do like the the timeline that he has to get into Andy's body um, it, because it just it raises the stakes. Everybody, yeah, you know, if you know good does. storytelling, you know that you want to raise the stakes. Um, he wipes the blood from his nose that. and he's like, oh, no, it's almost too long now. I'm <laughs> Which stuck like, in this makes sense. Doll. For some reason, it makes sense. Like, oh, yeah, of course. I bought it. Because now he's becoming real. He's developing blood arteries. Arteries are developing inside yeah. of that doll. But he'll never be human. It was such an but, odd Okay, line. So the, oh, okay, the very, whatever. very yeah. first Chucky, if you were to just watch the first like four minutes and not the fifth minute where he where he takes where his soul enters a doll's body you would think that mm-hmm. it was just a, a sh- another shitty 80s action movie there's like cars exploding and flipping over and like you know there's a there's like a a, a shootout with police and 
And then he gets into a doll's body and it's a slasher flick. Yeah. What a what a left right? turn. It's, Just really It's very 80s. In the first before the credits roll. And I you know? So the reason I wanted to watch Chucky 2 or talk about Chucky 2 is because I always like loved Chucky as a kid. Like I thought it was like the pinnacle of mm. horror films. And oh, then wow. uh, as an adult, I, I made the mistake of watching it again. I was like, this is horrible. Mm. This is horrible. This is not like anything like I remember it to be. I don't, And I couldn't figure it out why. And then on a whim about three weeks ago, I watched Chucky 2. Well, I <laughs> not on a whim. I watched it because my daughter, who is almost four, loves horror movies and had been wanting to watch Chucky because it kind of panders to, you know, her spooky little kid mind. And I yeah. I told yeah. my wife, like, we can show her, you know, some horror movies, yes, because she's obviously into it. Other horror movies, no. Chucky is a no for me because it's like it's too real for a kid's imagination. Like the victim is a child, a five-year-old child, like pretty much her age. It's just it's a bit too much. Yeah. But. You know, I think probably if a few months, I'm jumping through time. A few months ago, uh, she seemed to me like she was ready and she'd been asking. So I put on Chucky one and I immediately remember just like how bad this movie is. She wanted to watch it again about two weeks ago. I didn't want to watch it. I was like, how about we do Chucky two? And as soon as I put it on, I realized this is the Chucky of my childhood. I was thinking of yeah. Chucky 2 uh, all this time. That's why oh. I liked it so much because Chucky 2 is a much better story. Yeah, it's fun. It's really fun. They have a lot of go, like a lot of fun with the the horror elements, and they don't treat the the story as being as important as they do in the first one, if I remember. So and and I just I I love the idea of Andy now being in a foster home as well because mm-hmm. again, just raising the stakes. Just ra- and his mom's in a mm-hmm. mental institution, and it's just got like it's got like some genuine pathos. And he's like he's double trapped, like he's in a shitty foster home, and yes. he's being hunted down by this doll that you know that broke up his family, like that put his mother in a mental institution and caused him to be in this mm-hmm. foster home. Like that's real drama. And he has like uh, you know PTSD. He sure does. Like, it, it, it kind of respects the with the situation as dumb as the situation at large actually is, where it's like a doll killing people because he's got a serial killer trapped inside of him. Just the fact that a a uh, child would you know go through that. The second movie respects the fact it that does. he's like traumatized. Yeah, as a child, and like thought, a child, like, his psychologist is like one yeah. of the most important characters in that movie. Dies mm-hmm. tragically early, but uh, but is important to the story. And and I also like the Kyle character. Yeah, great supporting, great supporting character. It was a good choice to do that instead of having just like the whole movie resting on the shoulders of a you know five or six year old. It's like this person is an adult, so like yeah. you can connect well, to this she's person. She's not an adult yet. She's seventeen. Not an adult. She's going to be no, eighteen. Yeah, she's real soon and then she's ditching this house <laughs> all right she's gonna live her life the way that she deserves to live it she's gonna smoke a pack a day two packs of course, if she of wants. Course. um but she's like the adult ish analog i yes. guess to the child the main character uh, also probably played by like a 27 year old woman <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, 17. Not 17. yeah she's not 17 yeah definitely yeah. <laughs> yeah but she becomes a surrogate mother in the film, the film, you know, plays with family in an interesting way. And the Much fact like that there's Wes like Anderson and the, the Anderson foster family do in, mm-hmm. in their films, mm-hmm. it's uh, the similarities yes. are actually kind of uncanny thematically. Yes. <laughs> also, I was surprised by how wonderfully choreographed the film was. Like I thought that the, the camera work was really great. Like the, the, the use of wide angle lenses throughout the whole movie, like, either added dread or also just like really gave you a sense of like the child like level of the movie. Cause it's from the kid's perspective. Mm. I did not pick uh, up on that. My friend, that's uh, oh, I, 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 I love that you, that you did. I love that you, you treated it like a true, you know, work of art, a true patron of the well, arts. 
Well, I find that, I mean, I, I'm a bit of a curmudgeon sometimes about movies these days. Uh, the way that sometimes movies are filmed, I don't know, in the 80s and 90s. There's just kind of like, even if they're making the biggest piece of garbage, there's still like a level of craft sometimes to just how it's put together, especially like mm-hmm. movies like mm-hmm. this. Like old 80s horror movies sometimes are real garbage, but this one, it just really felt like it was very meticulously put together. Like the just the, some of the, the camera angles, just the use of wide angles was like very blatant. How do you guys feel about the sort of the next phase of Chucky? The like the the comedic Chucky. The I, it feels like there are three phases now. Like there's there's the first three films, which are the they're the like uh, traditional slasher horror. Um, like they're you know they're, I mean there's funny moments obviously the serial killer doll. Um, yes. But then there's the the Bride of Chucky, Seed of Chucky, Cult of Chucky with Jennifer Tilly. And these are like heavily self-referential, very like rock and roll. It seems like they're going like they are uh, their intended audience are the kids like me who grew up loving the first ones. And, you know, and and we will never be scared of Chucky again. So let's just... Let's just give them laughs. Mm. How do you guys feel about it? I, I, I've, well, I, I think the question is, can a franchise live on this, the sort of approach that they take with the first film? So if they made nine films and then they all, they treated them each with the same sort of level of like, let's really scare people. Have you watched time. Halloween? This kills? tiny doll with a comedically small knife <laughs> yeah. is going to kill a bunch <laughs> of fucking people and do all this crazy shit. It's like by film nine, it's like, what? It's That's like why um, there's like Jason in space. Yeah. And like, you know, Freddy Krueger's done a bunch of crazy yeah, Freddy shit. Freddy Krueger's like pretty this... self-aware at a certain, after three or four movies also. Is it? He's just making jokes. They all are. Yeah. Well, he's, he's just he's just doing like one-liners <laughs> as opposed to just actually being, because the first movie is really creepy. Even in, in the second and third one, he's pretty creepy. But yeah, it just kind of gets cartoonish after a while. I, for whatever reason, that's just the trajectory for movies. I, I, I think the franchises would implode. I mean, they kind of do anyways, but they would implode if they didn't take that approach because to keep it genuine just would stop playing after a while. And also, there's only so many ways to be like a spooky movie, and then it's like, I guess we're a funny movie now. So why? So why? <laughs> well, let's just flip. Why the coin. hasn't Saw or Halloween done that yet? You know, because you're right about like mm. Jason. Like Jason did go to space. Leprechaun was in the hood. Uh, and also in space. Mm-hmm. Was he ever? Oh, actually, Leprechaun. He was in the hood twice. Leprechaun in the, <laughs> in the hood twice. Leprechaun back to the hood. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe Jennifer Aniston turned down those subsequent roles. Uh, she could have been a part of the greatest movie franchise in history. And instead, she went off to do Friends. She made a mistake. Did Trash. you guys know that uh, Chucky... <laughs> Uh, okay, what's, what's the what's the company called? Good Buddy? Yeah. Yeah. It is based on a real doll that was very popular at that time, I think called My Buddy. Yeah, My Buddy and Me. Ooh. I remember You're, those commercials. Yeah, but like... I had one of those. It's it's Chucky. Yeah, it kind of is, yeah. Weird. No, it's, see, it's see, not kind of context, Chucky. Like, it not kind of is. is. It is, man. It, like, it's the exact same Literally. costume. I think it's just like the hair is changed and it has more freckles. Yeah, the red hair makes it scarier. See, in that context, the film works. Like as a like if you're a kid and you're like, I have one of these toys, and you watch this movie and this toy's killing people because it's, you know, uh being possessed by a murderer, that's way better. But now, like, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. And I think films have to, whether they want to or not, they can't remove themselves from the previous films in a in a series. So they have to at some or on some level be aware of those movies and change how they're made accordingly. Mm-hmm. Like if you made a Chucky now and just pretended all the other Chuckies didn't exist, I don't think Well, it that's work. exactly what they did. Like on that's some, literally what they yeah. did with the most recent child's play. Oh, and it and it sucked. I wouldn't right? say it, it sucked. mostly sucked. I wouldn't say it sucked. I just thought it was really underwhelming, but I admired right. the intention. Like I like, right, I like right, a yeah. good like spiritual sequel 
But do but they they as filmmakers they have to know that the audience is going in with this preconceived notion and an adoration so, for the franchise probably and they need to be aware no, of that but and that will inform well, yes, their decisions. They should ha- they they must be. But the this movie I don't know if it's PG-13. It might be PG-13. It's definitely not that gory. It's not that foul right. like i don't know i don't remember any swear words like chucky 2 was hard to watch with my kid because he is repeatedly mm. calling women bitches yes he does oh yeah. yes yeah he's yeah. like he's a real a misogynistic, misogynistic. Doll. Like, that was i don't know yeah. if she'll be watching it again anytime soon we might have to go back yeah. to like chucky one we won't watch the new chucky because she thought it was boring as shit um, mm-hmm. but you know, we might have to go back to like some of her favorites, uh, Ouija origins of evil. Um, right. Uh, mm-hmm. what else has she been, uh, what else has she been into? Um, dark skies alien movie with Carrie Russell. Okay, that's cool. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She really yeah. likes that movie. When, what was kind of the first horror movie that like got her sparked and she's like this is great i love this oh do you do you rem- remember what it was uh was it sallow 120 days of i think Sonic? it was sallow. <laughs> 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 it might have been oh, sweet lord nightmare before christmas i hate that movie with all I think my it, heart i think we started her on nightmare oh, before fun. christmas and then we were like oh she really likes creepy shit yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the Christmas part was irrelevant. She's like, no, can, I like all we the can ask like, her. spooky shit going on. Do, do you want me to? Do you want me to get? Oh her? yeah, actually, that's a great question. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too soon? Okay. One, one moment. Let's do it. <clears throat> do, we, do we need to have some sort of like child labor laws or something like that for hey, a podcast? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no. It's all ed- educational. Dude, hey, do you want to be on a podcast? Yeah, you do? Okay. Oh, goodness. Oh, cute. Yeah, That's I so cute. Talk to you. <laughs> uh. Hey, Chris, do you want to be on a podcast? I feel like we're getting a we're getting an exclusive here. Yeah, I think I think we are. This is like probably our this will be the apex of our journalistic okay. sort of endeavor, I, pants, I think. But I'm sure that's going to be fine. Yeah, I just take my pants. You know what? No one on the podcast can see that you're not wearing pants. Can you come over here? Hi. Yeah, they literally can't see you. Uh, I can, hello. All right, now they can see you. Okay. Hello. Hello. Do you hear them? Hi. Okay. Hi. My name is Mike. So that's. Hi, and I'm Mike. Bob. Thanks for joining us. And that one's Bob. Hi, Bob. Okay. And you're, Hi, what's, nice what's to your meet name? you. Noe. Hi, Noe. Yeah. So we were just talking about Chucky 2. We were just talking about Chucky. Uh, you've seen mm-hmm. a few Chuckies now. Which one's your favorite? Uh, two. Yeah? Yeah. The, the second, second one. Why is that? I can't really love it so much. <laughs> and why do you love it? I just love it so much. That's it. <laughs> I love it so much. Just a deep love. Yeah, That's deep love. great. You like sc- what else do you need? You like scary movies, Noe? Yeah, I do. I love scary everything. Not too everything? scary. So- Not too scary. Only a little bit scary. Right. What's too What's- scary? Um, like, like, uh, um, so scary was movies, so scary movies, but not the uh, new Chucky. No, the new Chucky is definitely not that. What? So yeah. what would mm-hmm. what would be like a movie that's too scary? This don't. I know which no. one. I know which one you haven't been able to finish. Us. <sighs> you haven't been able to finish us. Yeah. You've tried. Three times. Yeah, and I, I am too scared. I'm too scared. <laughs> but what, what's the scary movie that you do like to watch? Like Chucky and, 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 
Oops. Are you a little bit nervous? Yeah. I, you are. I out. don't know. Uh, okay. That's okay. That's there all right. Was a, there is a scary alien movie that you like to watch all the time. What's it called? Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember. Dark Skies? Yeah. Yeah. What happens in it? I like the all the aliens. I like <laughs> all the alien movies. You like all the alien movies. movies, yeah. Yeah. They are alien so cool. Alien movies, cool. cool. Yeah, you shouldn't play yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Do you uh, Do you guys celebrate Halloween? Uh, I think we do. Yeah. Uh, do you, have you dressed, I mean, by that I mean, do you guys, have you dressed up? Oh. Do you, do we dress up for Halloween? Yeah, we're going to dress up for the Adam's family. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, we're dressing up as the Adam's family. I, this wasn't That's my fun. idea. I, I think it was her idea. I actually don't know. That's yes, funny. it was. <laughs> uh, which, which character are you going to be? I'm going to be Wednesday. Oh, of course, of course. Wednesday. Wednesday's the best and how about your dad? What's he going to uh, be? I believe I'm going to be Gomez. Of course. Oh, Gomez. Think, thinking right, about going the mustache. Right. Thinking about shaving the beard and going the mustache. Like, oh, and, nice. like I'm a bit of a method Ooh. actor uh, for Halloween. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Oops. Excuse me. Yeah, last year, you know, went as Jason Bourne. <laughs> yes. Killed my neighbors. Yes. And uh, so I just got out. And it's been time to be Gomez. Deep. Yeah. Um, hey, Noe, can you, uh, okay, first of all, you shouldn't touch the microphone while you're recording because all people will hear is you touching it. Um, second of all, um, so there's going to be some people listening to this who've never seen Chucky 2 before. <sighs> is that your review? Just a big old yawn? <laughs> it's nine o'clock. Um, yes. Could you tell it's people late. what happens in Chucky? <laughs> I don't remember. You don't remember? No. Okay, what does Chucky do? I don't remember. You don't remember what he does. Well, you're going to be in trouble if a Chucky shows up at your front door because you don't remember what he does to people. And you're just going to be like, come on in, have some have some treats with me. Um, Noe, when I was your age, I watched Chucky and I was really, really scared by it. Um, are you really, really scared or do you kind of find it fun? Me? Find it fun. Do you find it fun? What do you find fun about it? The, do you like the doll? Yeah, do you like the robot? I do, but I like regular dolls, not Chucky in real life. <laughs> All right. So, what do you say? Did you have fun on this podcast? Is it time to go yeah. downstairs? Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. That's great. So, yeah, thank you. It was great and, meeting uh, you. And before, before you leave, um, you just have to recommend one good book to uh to to people listening so that they know that we're not terrible parents <laughs> what's what's a, I, what's one good book and vegetable that every listener should have i don't remember no you don't remember because we don't read you books or feed you vegetables all right have a good night <laughs> and let her out <laughs> can you let yourself out can you open the door I, I my- sorry that you hurt your leg okay <laughs> Why is that open it? Why is it? I'll tell you later. It's a secret. Oh, can you close the door? Very cute. All right. Very cute. You can close so the door. So cute. Anytime. All right. There you have it. That is why very, there very are good. no podcasts hosted by three and a half year olds. <laughs> Children. <laughs> no, that was great. That was great. I, when I was her age, like the idea of somebody being like, do you want to be on this podcast? I'd be like, yes, absolutely. And then I would just freeze up immediately. I just when know you were I her would. age and people I could barely do it as an adult to podcasts. <laughs> 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 I feel like uh, the the version yeah, of that yeah. was, uh, hey, can you? Yeah, you got to tell your uncle that joke that you told me. Oh yeah, exactly. yes, yes. Like, uh, oh, I don't remember. I hate those situations.
Uh, so yeah, Omar, yeah, yeah. I, when I was yeah when I was uh, Noe's age, I was like deathly terrified of this movie. Like it, like my imagination couldn't handle this movie. Do you have any sort mm. of do you have any sort of understanding of your daughter's mind? I guess why she's attracted to this and not like completely just like terrified, having nightmares kind of thing. Uh, well, we got a CT scan, and there's a part of her brain that she's missing <laughs> that correlates oh, no. with fear. <laughs> yes. Oh, and, okay. All right. All right. Um, so she's just she's just <laughs> fearless. And we don't know if it's the mm-hmm. good fearless or the bad fearless. Like we don't know if yeah. it's like a like a Wonder Woman fearless or we need to talk about Kevin <laughs> kind of fearless. Yes. And I guess time right, will right. tell. <laughs> Um, Do you worry that your your children you're going to end up in a we we need to talk about Kevin situation? That movie was terrifying. Yeah, it I was. was like, no, I feel like if kid? there if there's a kid that is going to be Kevin, it's not our son. It it's it's her. our our yeah. son's like quite sensitive, very very empathetic. If she starts crying, he starts crying. If he starts Aww. crying, she just gets mad. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like I we took her to. Um, it must. It was like some little petting zoo kind of thing when she was, um, she could barely walk. So I think she was maybe a year old and she had the opportunity to have a tarantula in her palm. And she was just like, yeah, give me that tarantula. Like I had to like hold her oh, hand wow. and they put a tarantula in her palm and she just held this tarantula and just smiled at it. Probably w- oh, would have kissed nice. it if they would let her. Uh, <laughs> so mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, she's just always just, been not scared of what you're supposed to be scared of and she Mm, took two scary things at a very 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 young age um i think i mean part of it is just like i like horror as uh i I just like watching horror because for me it's good like shut your brain off move uh movies it's you don't have to think too deeply the stakes are so obvious. Someone's life is in danger. Someone's trying to kill them. It's good enough for me. Uh, so after like working uh, like a long day of work or just, you know, a, a busy week or something, that's that's how I just want to shut my brain off. And right, right, right. with yeah. the when the pandemic hit, I it kind of took on this like new importance in my life where I just had all this like nervous energy and tension. And I found it very cathartic to watch horror films in the pandemic. Mm. Um, Even Mm. specifically like zombie films, I found like weirdly, you know, cathartic. It just, it was, I just felt like a little bit of a release. (laughs) It's just like when, you know, when you're going through shit and someone makes like a dark joke and at a funeral or something like that. And you just, (laughs) you're just like yeah what can you do (laughs) they're not coming back did you watch contagion at the beginning of the year like everybody else did yeah how was how was that experience i haven't actually seen that you haven't was oh no no what was it like watching was it was like watching like an like an educational instructional video of like what to do in a pandemic it was weird because it was like oh wow this movie's 10 years old and they were like telling us they were basically telling us how to how to like handle this Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. What about zombie movies? Have zombie movies like made you be reflect and be like, "Oh, this is I'm living through this." No <laughs> way. Uh, yeah. Actually, um, so if you if we can rewind to March 2020, uh, you can. The WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, not the rock band, just declared a global yes, yes. pandemic, <laughs> and. I had, uh, so I, you know, at the time we had this like month, me and my friends, we had this like monthly movie night and we would take turns hosting and it was my turn to host in March. And I'd already made, you set the date and all the events around this movie night were being canceled because global pandemic. I very stubbornly, you know, did not cancel and was just like, friends come over. We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. We're going to watch the original Dawn of the Dead. So that was like, that mm-hmm. was my last, you know, big gathering at my home was to watch Dawn of the Dead to basically laugh at the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> right, right, right. So, uh, <laughs> and, it, and it went off without a hitch? Yeah, no, I mean, it was not a super spreader event. Um, good, uh, good. You know, some of those people would go on to get COVID. 
Uh, oh, no. Some of them would go on to die. Um, and some of them would become president of the United States of America. <laughs> wow. No, but that, that was, was like, a journey. You know, at a movie. That was a freaking journey. That was, right that was what, at the end of a movie, they freeze frame on each character and there's a small bit of text being like, and so-and-so went off to fight in the Vietnam War. And then it's like, so-and-so became CEO of what is now, you know, Tell a us. massive corporation. And that man's name was <laughs> Albert yeah. Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow wow yeah yeah i don't know for for me i can't watch uh like contagion or outbreak i was like this is too close yeah why i don't want to like I, I i feel like what i need is the opposite of what you need omar um and i was like i just need rom-coms <laughs> left right and center like i need just blind enthusiasm meet cutes you know mindless garbage give me matthew mcconaughey like 1999 to 2009 mm-hmm Although I just watched Failure to Launch and Wowie, that is a bad film. Yeah, I which one's that? Love me a bad rom com. He, it's with uh, oh SJP, God, Sarah Jessica Parker, and he's like stuck at home and he's in his. 30s. He's an incel. He's hot. He basically <laughs> he's is an, an incel. incel. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey plays and an then, incel. And then, in this and film. then his parents <laughs> hire her to get him out of the house, but then she actually falls in love with him. <sighs> yeah, which perpetuates a really gnarly sort of there's some undertones there that are deep is he is he like that it's like you could be an incel and still well no he's not like a no he he rock wall climbs he's He's jacked he doesn't have the internet i don't think the film does not display the internet yeah i mean in the 2000s it didn't exist so yeah the internet really only came to fruition at the beginning of the pandemic as we all know as we all know um thank goodness it was invented in late 2019 (laughs) You know, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, yeah. Failure to launch. That's not what this episode's about, but terrible film. Do not watch it. Yeah. I find that during the pandemic, uh, I, I will, am gravitating more towards comfort movies, I guess. So I, I found that I rewatched a lot more stuff this last year than I normally would. I did too. Normally I'm just trying to like get the, those new movies logged on letterboxed, you know, but this, <laughs> this last year I'm like, no, nah, I'll watch, watch dumb and dumber again. Have you? Sure. Uh, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I did. I did a lot of uh, rewatching as well. Did you feel uh, trapped in? The, I mean, not that this is going to be a pandemic interview because I mean we've, we're all tired of this whole pandemic thing. But did you find that you were feeling like you were like trapped in the house in a way, or you just had enough projects to work on? Early pandemic? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I had a really, really, really hard time being at home. Oh, really? You would think, you know writer freelance writer for you know a full-time i don't know eight years at that point you think Mm -hmm. but no i mean i usually would work at home only for a few hours before i would hit up a library or a cafe oh yeah i guess so yeah yeah i i you know i don't like to uh i and i always just need a little bit of a change of scenery like even when i had an office i would sometimes just want to leave the office to go work from home uh, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. not having that ability, that was a real challenge, but I, but I adjusted to it. And actually, I think, you know, in the end, um, maybe needed to learn how to work from an office, uh, from a home office. Mm-hmm. Cause, uh, mm-hmm. you know, those like, that's a lot of coffee. Like that's a lot of money spent yeah. on coffee just so oh, like yeah. work at oh, a yes. coffee shop. Yes. I looked at my credit card receipts for March. In February of like last year when I was doing my taxes and I was like, oh, wow, I really spent a lot of money outside of the house where during the pandemic was, yeah, I wasn't buying a coffee every day or going to like a restaurant every other day, you know, so. I mean, sometimes I think that God started the pandemic just so that I could learn to be better with money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that, yeah, looking out just yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah. But it, it worked, did. right? It did. You're way better with yeah. money. Yeah. Well, I was, and then, you know, and I got vaccinated, and I was like, woo! <laughs> Let's coffee go shops, to the coffee shops again. <laughs> How was filming a documentary during a pandemic? Uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 it didn't suck, but it certainly wasn't preferred. Um, I mean, I was making those jokes about me and the crew – getting in one car and sharing a hotel room. I mean, we, we all had to take separate vehicles. 
separate hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. We only really talked to each other in, in like virtual meetings and then on set when it was time to shoot. When we did some, when we did some uh, shots of stuff for the feature film, this past uh, summer during the best summer ever um that was the first time that we actually like got in a car unmasked um and and drove for a couple of hours to the next town and actually had like a personal friendly conversation with each other about something that had nothing to do with the movie Um, oh wow Mm -hmm. yeah it was kind of it it yeah, it was it was not it was not great. With this, you know, I didn't I was on I'm on camera a lot and I'm wearing a mask most of the time. Obviously not ideal, but knowing that that was the way it was going to have to be, then we made the, we made it a part of the story. And uh, yeah, I mean just to get it just to get it uh greenlighted and and funded, we have to we had to put together a COVID-19 like protocol plan and submit that to the uh to the network and they had to approve mm. it and mm. and then we had to just make sure that we adhered to it um you know there's so many release forms to begin with with shooting a documentary and then we had to add like two more release forms one where we take everyone's temperature um both crew and subjects and then get them to sign off on that and then another release form where where they're signing a liability waiver that you know if one of the crew gives them COVID 19 they can't sue i mean it was yeah Yeah. i i would not recommend it but the pandemic's not going away anytime soon so we should probably still be making movies yeah Mm -hmm. i mean but Mm -hmm. it's also good that uh, enough time had passed like you guys kind of lucked out in a way that the protocols had kind of been developed and people were kind of used to a certain kind of new normal you know that you could actually make a documentary at kind of the pace that no- one would normally make one. You just kind of have to wear masks and there's a couple of inconveniences, I guess, but yep. You're right about that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. It is kind of a strange world we're living in right now where we're like, Oh, we're all used to this and it's kind of annoying more than it is. And terrifying. you know, actually, yeah. Uh, it, it did benefit us in a weird way. You know, the burger barons is uh, as, per part of the story they they work tirelessly right they they almost never close their restaurants their work you know they they work seven days a week and so mm-hmm. in order to interview them um we would go to the restaurants and the restaurants were operating that's why like there's there's a lot of like different you know restaurant sounds throughout the movie um yeah and i kind of like the vibe to be honest like i i kind of like the fact that they're they're like working restaurants throughout the interview it's kind of like a wes anderson movie there's always something going on in the background um yeah but uh it certainly made it a lot easier and the sound better that there was a lot there was not a lot of dine-in actually most of the burger barons were not it was takeout only right so we had like the whole front of house to set up our gear set up the mics the lights all that stuff so so it actually made in a weird way it made this very specific documentary easier to shoot. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I guess because you'd want some of that sweet, sweet diegetic sound of the, you know, the drive through working without you having to be kind of interrupted too much. Yes, exactly. By, like people just getting in the shot while they're dining inside. And yeah. you can, t- oh, like there is one restaurant that it's in Caroline where as uh, the owner uh, says with a very straight face, you know, business has been good because luckily people here don't believe in COVID. Uh, right, right. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. the one that's like that restaurant is fully like operating. And there's a lot, like there's a lot going on in that interview, like bell chimes. Every time the door opens, there's like dishes falling, <laughs> or like utensils falling on the floor and stuff. Um, so, you know, that one's kind of the exception. Most of them were, were closed. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, we didn't really talk about your book too much, but uh, I I watched your movie. I started reading your book, but because books take not 45 minutes and they take hours and hours and hours, I didn't finish it, but uh, I, loved, I liked what I read so far. Uh, and I thought that the writing style was really wonderful, like just the how like personal it was. I was kind of surprised. I didn't really know what I was getting into, but it was basically like you were telling your story. Uh, a lot of the time and 
So I do, I do find it kind of fascinating that the book and the movie kind of came out the same week and they both are kind of you reflecting on your entire life and your family as well and your relationship to your family and their relationship to being in Canada and all that stuff. They, they, they are actually like kind of similar stories or, or they're, they're yeah, they they are adjacent to each other in a in a strange way. Even though one's a comedic documentary that is super regional, and one is a socials like a, a social sciences book uh, that is international, um, they are both essentially uh, about the you know sort of overlooked, sometimes ignored legacies of racialized communities. In the West, yeah, exactly, yeah, uh, yeah. It's like yeah, they're good companion pieces, even though I would never, yeah, look at the two things and be like, these these are companions, yeah. But yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah, that was that was really fascinating. And like, how was it traveling around the world to write a book uh, and then have to sit in your house for a year <laughs> after just getting to see the world? <laughs> uh, it it like I said, it was really hard for me in the early days of the <laughs> pandemic. That was a part of it. I I'd been traveling. You know, basically, I was getting on a plane every month for almost two and a half years. And then so I had a lot of right, inertia right, right. kind of built in me. The The thing is, I, I had to stop traveling anyway and write the damn book. Mm-hmm. So I, just by coincidence, right. my last trip to Brazil, I got back in December. COVID-19 broke out the next month. And then two months after that, wow. we were all like on lockdown. And... Um, so I, I actually, people think that I wrote my book in the pandemic. Literally, I wrote like the last chapter in, in the last two weeks of March. Uh, it was, I actually delivered it like, I think March 27th, the first draft. Um, I rewrote it in the pandemic, which I think is, is probably just as important, maybe more important because by then I had, I think a lot of time to reflect, not a lot of distractions. Mm-hmm. And so when the book came back to me with edits, I was like ready to, you know, re- like re- really ready to um, kind of reimagine things and, and make some serious substantial changes. Uh, in order yeah, for yeah. It. And, it, and it did definitely become a little bit more personal too in that, uh, in that, you know, sort of phase of the book, you were commenting on how it kind of surprised you that it's, uh, somewhat of a memoir and that you didn't really realize that going in. Uh, a lot of people no, don't. I didn't. A yeah. lot of people don't. And it, it's kind of the inverse of, of the Burger Baron one where a lot like people know that it's, it's right off the bat. It's a very personal story. You know that. Um, but then you, you know, as it goes on, you realize this is like this transnational odyssey. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas with mm-hmm. praying to the West, you go in, Assuming it's going to be a, like a, a very transnational kind of odyssey, not realizing that it's also a memoir. Yeah, because the Burger Baron situation is just kind of mentioned in passing, just like, oh, yeah, my dad worked at a burger chain. And then just move, moving yeah. on, it's just kind of like, it's about me and this is about my my journey and stuff. Yeah. Um, no, this was great, Omar. It was so nice it was to meet really you. really nice to meet you. Um, and yeah, this, this was great. And honestly, like the documentary is phenomenal. I had such a good time and I'm looking forward to the feature length. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah I'm looking forward to it as Form well. Form when, when that we, comes out. How, just, just, just real quick. How was your, uh, local screening and book launch, I guess. Oh God. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they was both great you know, we, we did it. We, we flouted all the, the guidelines, um, in order to do it. Um, it was real underground, nice, nice. um, sensation. Great uh fuck yeah nice no i was i was just uh, happy to to do it and um you know it was done with with quite a bit of precautions like the movie screening was like at 30 percent, and uh you had to be vaccinated for both and all that and you know what that's your reward for for yeah. getting vaccinated you get to hear me talk uh about my book for an hour and then watch uh another hour about me um that's yeah. that's what everyone deserves are you finding because of all of the attention you have to check yourself? You know, sometimes check myself. People are like Omar. You're, yeah, people are like Omar. You're you're getting you're getting too big. Yeah, you know? your your heads your heads getting too big yeah. right now. You're just you just no. It's real. Like the other day, shit. I like just 
tried to like walk out of Safeway with all my groceries unpaid. Yeah. And uh, I assumed that like security <laughs> recognized me from the Burger Baron movie. Yeah. And it would be Don't cool you know with who that. I am? And he had no idea. <laughs> Idiot. Doesn't even have Terrible. CBC. What kind of fool <laughs> doesn't have the state broadcaster on his television set? <laughs> Uh, CBC Gem, actually. It's on it's CBC true. It's on Gem. CBC Gem. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, which is great. It's easy to watch. So Very if our listeners watch. You're gonna watch love it and the commercials. You are going to love the commercials. If you hate commercials, yes. then maybe get a CBC Premium account. But if you yes. love mm-hmm. commercials, do not get that account. Do not pay your subscription fee because you are in for a treat. There are so many commercials. I. I only, I only I got one like commercial. No, you got sorry, ads. you got one commercial repeatedly. I assume. No, they only played yeah. one Come commercial. On. No, Bob, Bob, yeah. your, Bob, In, your experience is. I, I think I think I saw twenty three yeah, soda stream that's, ads. That's that's the time. experience. Oh, really? like, it's the same it would commercial. Be a documentary for it's three like minutes. Three minutes and then soda of stream. the same thirty second commercial over and over again. And if you I mean, try to yeah, forward it, it if you try to skip it. It goes right back to the beginning, and you have to watch those three minutes of SodaStream commercials all over again. I bought a SodaStream, yeah. though. It works. Yeah, it does work. It's it just works. like, that's better advertising. The system works. Just repeating it. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, right, SodaStream. Yeah, so I forgot SodaStream, about that. Yeah. It's been two minutes. Oh, yeah, I should buy a SodaStream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, please check it out. It's easy. It's easy to access, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Fun and educational. Uh, yeah. Which is a fine line. <laughs> Fine line. And watch out for the feature line. length. And you watch the film it. also coming out. That's right. Oh, yeah. Can, yeah. What am I doing? I got to plug this. We are, uh, huh? we're, we're, we, we are running a crowdfunder to finish the feature yes. film. Yes. Like, oh, we're yeah. working on it, but we're still raising some money in order to finish it. We're very close. Our minimum goal is 15,000. We're at 12,500 ish. Really okay. cool awesome. perks. If you make a donation, Anything over thirty dollars, we'll give you an on-screen credit. Uh, but we have like some cool posters of all the Burger Barons in the world. Oh, cool! Whoa. Personalized uh, movie posters with your name in the credit block. And I, I want to show you guys my favorite perk. One moment here. Are you ready? This is gonna blow your mother friggin' minds. Whoa! Amazing. For the listeners at home, it's a, a a a miniature, a tiny tray with a burger baron meal. Is that a mushroom burger? The mushroom. There's detail. Sauce. I can see it. I can read burger baron on the cup. The mushroom sauce. Oh, mushroom sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow, look at so yeah. creamy. Wow. Yeah, it's very creamy. Yeah, you get really get like a very sense moist of the creamy. Mini- These miniature. are made by uh, uh, a woman whose company is called Little Day Miniatures. I love this. This is so. Anyway, wonderful. Uh, she makes these. So, so she makes to be clear, you you get one of these if you for uh, one hundred and twenty five dollars. <laughs> you get this beautiful one, this beautiful uh, work of art. Each one is one of a kind. Um, she makes them yeah. with three D printers and a bunch of other um, materials, and they are cool. exclusively mm-hmm. available on our Indiegogo. So just search the Last Baron Indiegogo. Nice, nice. Sweet. Yeah, done. I'll, I'll, I'll donate 125 bucks. Easy. Yeah, I want to see this movie. There's a market for so that. That's awesome. There's a market for miniatures of the Burger Baron because there's some Burger Baron super fans. Most definitely. There's a couple of Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that looks, that's pretty cool. We had 20 of these made. I think there's 11 left. Oh, that's sweet. Ooh. I like it. Time sensitive. That's good. All right. All right. So, yeah. Clock's ticking, people. You want this miniature <laughs> food tray with a delicious looking You better hamburger? get it before my nose Hustle. starts bleeding and I need a new body <laughs> or it's too late for me to get. I don't know how this works. I, I got to say, when even though Chucky was a doll, uh, when he when he got his hand cut off and then he had to jab like a, a knife into his hand so that he could have like a knife hand. Even though I know he was a doll, because they had created the reality that he had blood in him now, I found it, I, I cringed as if it was a human being. <laughs> I, I yeah. reacted to the, the visceralness of, of it. I was like, yeah, that is, I'm, I'm buying into 
Chucky's journey. Right That's now. the magic for, of of uh, of empathy of uh, having, yeah. creating an empathetic character. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yes. Um. So we've we've promoted the the movie and then the Indiegogo for the movie. And where can people get your book? Everywhere that books are sold. Everywhere. Praying to the West. How Muslims shape the Nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. I got mine from the Glass Bookshop. Glass Bookshop in Edmonton. Free delivery. Yeah, in Edmonton. Uh, it's available Free wherever delivery. good books are sold, wherever bad books are sold, wherever <laughs> completely average books are sold. Um, <laughs> you might even find it where you wouldn't think books to be sold, like maybe a superstore. Ooh, I wouldn't bank on it. Don't okay. bank. Don't go to a superstore for the book. What about Walmart? You can definitely find it at Walmart. Nice. Nice. Shout out to Walmart. <laughs> Am I right? What's it What's it like seeing your name on a shelf at Walmart? I haven't yet, but I can tell you oh, okay. it's kind of cool to have a, a Walmart product page. I should That's actually good. make that oh. my my like Instagram bio link. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send people to Walmart to buy my book. Not Amazon, not your local bookstore, Walmart. <laughs> Will Jeffrey Bezos deliver this via drone if I if I want? Can I get this via, delivered via drone? You can. Sweet. You can. You just Sweet. won't be able to see the drone. Kind of like a tooth fairy situation. If yeah, you look course. for the mm. drone, you won't get the book. But as soon as you're not looking for the drone, the drone comes by and slips it in your mailbox. And you have to give up a tooth also. To get the book. One of your adult teeth. <laughs> it is the number one book in Edmonton four weeks in a row. Wow. Yeah. Nice. That's actually not, that's not like a real bragging rights thing. <laughs> is it usually like a poetry book or like? It is, it is usually like the, the you know, it is usually a local author. Yes. Yes. The, yeah, the number yeah, one book yeah, in Edmonton yeah. is almost always a local author. Yes. And every once in a while, uh, it's Malala. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. not this week. <laughs> right, Take right. that, nice, Malala. Nice. <laughs> Eat it. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Eat it, Malala. Eat it, Malala. <laughs> uh, great. There's so many sound bites from yes. this episode that Eat it, Malala. just really it is ruined halal. somebody's life. <laughs> 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 Uh, great. Well, thanks so much uh, for, for guesting on the pod. Also, thank say thank you to your daughter. I will. Who I can hear, I think, in the background a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, she was great. Tell her thank you so yeah, much. Thanks it was so an much. honor to have her on. It was an honor. We assume and we hope it was her first guest appearance on a podcast. If it wasn't, it was definitely her first. We're going to be a little bit pissed on a podcast. Oh, yeah, and an let honor. me tell you, it'll be good, her good, last. Good. Like, what was that? Yeah, it was a joke. <laughs> She says she wanted to be on the Maybe podcast. We'll... She comes on and says she, she doesn't remember. Come on. It's called prep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I asked yeah, her she, some questions. She done her I asked her about Chucky. Okay. I asked her if she remembered mm-hmm. what happened. She did. She choked up. Amateur. You know what? Rank amateur. Sometimes you don't land the first time. <laughs> you got a couple you know what? more cracks if at it. Eminem gave up rapping after the first time that he freestyled. Uh... We, there would be no Eminem, and the world would be yeah. a better place. Preach. Preach. What a journey yeah. we just went on. Wow. Uh, maybe um, we can have her on as a guest yeah. in the future, mm-hmm. when we, and we'll get her to help compare a good movie and a bad movie and find the similarities between both of them. She, I'm sure she could help us. That'd be I'll let you know when what she's is, ready. Yeah. The similarity yeah. between Paw Patrol I'll keep coaching and, her. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and like, you know, I want you to give her some notes when you're oh, done. Oh, she's going really to get have a one-on-one notes. with oh, her she's and say notes. like, listen, I have about six pages. <laughs> I printed them out. I need you to review these with me because you really <laughs> shit the bed. You did. And what's crazy so... <laughs> is that she shit the bed. She just, she literally <laughs> right, just literally, shit the bed. Right, quite literally shit the bed. Yes, yes. When I shit the bed, it's a whole thing, but it's fine for her to shit the bed. Ugh, what a world. When we when world. when we were kids, we sometimes you'd have toys of like adult things uh, that you just mm-hmm. kind of like, oh, this is a toy that's like an uh, of like an adult activity, like a cash register or you know, like a I don't know, vacuum or some stuff like that. Or a small I was tray say, with a burger. I have to hide this from her because oh. she wants to destroy it. Yes. 
Will there be a? I bet. Will there be like the next generation or her generation even? Just like we'll see parents podcasting, and then there'll be like a child's podcast set where kids can <laughs> podcast. You mean like, like a Fisher Price probably, like, 10, podcasting 12 years set? Old. It's got it. Yeah, like got in it maybe exists. ten years, it'll be a thing where kids will be like that, child podcasts. Absolutely, she's Honestly, got like seven yeah, big different time, big fake time. karaoke toys. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's the predecessor. I think we're really at the forefront. If anything, Mike, yeah. pitch it. I, okay. I'll at pitch the it. at the good 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 boy toy company. What is it in the Chucky <laughs> good movie? Good 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 buddy. Go to Good Buddy and say, "Hey, listen, I have an idea for a toy." <laughs> It's a podcast set, but it's, everything's just slightly disproportionate and made out of plastic and muted colors. And I know that you're a fictional company, but can you make this happen? <laughs> okay, we've we've riffed ourselves into oblivion here. Um, yeah, thanks again, yeah, yeah. Omar. Thank you very you much. You just watched us die. Thanks, guys. In real time. Yeah. It's been fun. No, this is what it's all about. Um, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much, uh, everybody. Buy the book. Watch the movie. Pay for the Donate crowdfunding. So we can make the long Donate movie to the crowd Indiegogo. 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 I'm I'm making an account right now so that I can uh, put uh, some money do. into pitch. We're support. also on Instagram, fun. Burger Baron Movie, and uh, oh, nice. we post oh, nice. a lot of uh, fun pictures from the mm-hmm. fun pictures of historic Burger Barons. I can nice. verify that. I nice. am following that account. Well, I'll follow it right now. Okay, Bob. Say awesome. say the catchphrase. This feels over. Great. Okay. Thanks, Omar. Bye. (laughs) Bye, guys. (laughs) 